It is undeniable that the losses of Russian tanks have been pretty high, so it would make sense that Russians are at least taking some actions to bring new tanks to their units in order to counter these losses. Today we will take a look at the, all the different ways that Russians are bringing new or old tanks to the front line. And you can take action to protect your privacy with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN offers the best deal in the market. For only $170 per month and 6 months extra, you can enjoy the most affordable online protection with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also unlock your favorite content all over the world, can't access a specific Netflix show while abroad, not a problem anymore, Atlas VPN got you covered. Atlas VPN also allows you to keep your Google searches private and gives you organic search results without anyone tracking your activity. What's more is that it's not just a VPN, Atlas lets you block all malicious links, ads and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Furthermore, it helps you save coins by saving you the best deals while shopping online, including subscriptions like Netflix or Spotify, airlines, hotels and more. In addition to all of that, Atlas VPN allows you to protect an unlimited number of devices with a single subscription. Grab the big deal because now Atlas VPN Premium is just $170 per month plus 6 months extra. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can make this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick, as it's a limited time offer. First thing I want to tackle is repair. You see, a lot of the damaged and abandoned tanks are often retrieved, of course if the situation allows for it to happen, and are repaired and then brought back into action. Now, there are different ways this can be done. Once the tank is retrieved, it will end up at the frontline repair units, which often tackle light damage, probably something like damaged tracks or something similar. Of course, this is a very small kind of stuff and is meant to repair tanks to bring them back into action within a day or two. But a lot of times, they will end up at the Rembat or repair battalions. These are usually stationed far behind the front line and feature heavier machinery and have access to a lot of spare parts and tooling necessary to repair vehicles. One of these was recently featured in a Russian documentary. This one in particular is stationed on Crimea. They show them repairing a lot of damaged vehicles, including BMPs and tanks, often repairing engines and other mobility-related stuff. One interesting thing is that they asked one of the commanders of the battalion what kind of people work here, and he says that only 5-6 to six people out of the entire battalion have actual former experience with repairing machinery, the rest being former farmers, managers, teachers, etc., with him being a former school principal. This was probably done to get more of the regular folk from Russia to join these kind of units. I will explain why I believe this a bit later. Now, if the damage the tank has received cannot be repaired with tools or spare parts, they are transported back to Russia, to one of the repair facilities. One of these was, again, shown in another one of the recent documentaries. They showed all kinds of damaged tanks, and they showed one of the problems of T-72B3 I've pointed out in several of my videos, including the video on the tank itself. One shot hit in between the ERA blocks on the turret, because T-72B3 has these stupid ERA gaps, but I guess it doesn't matter, does it? Anyway, it is explained that if the damage is done to just the armor, it will be repaired and sent back, while if something like an engine or main gun are damaged, like this main gun that has a hole in it, they will be replaced with a new one. They also stated that tanks with old modules, like the old engine, will be upgraded to more modern standards before being sent back. Of course, I would take this with a pinch of salt. While they definitely are upgrading some tanks, I do believe it is a far stretch to say that for all tanks that are there. Most common upgrade is replacement of the old V84, 840 horsepower engine, with the new V92 S2F, 1130 horsepower engine. The only thing that apparently needs to be done is a small cut on the exhaust port on the side of the tank's armor. Older engines are apparently sent to other facilities to be refurbished and or upgraded. Cleaning and repairing processes are also demonstrated, but I don't want to bore you with the details. While on the topic of upgrades, it's good time to talk about how they are refurbishing and upgrading old tanks from storage. A lot of tanks from storage are not in a very good condition, thus they need to be refurbished heavily in order to bring them to the good enough standard that they can be used in the field. That process is somewhat similar to the process of repairing damaged tanks. Main gun, engine and other parts in bad condition are replaced, hulls are stripped and cleaned of rust and other forms of damage, so are any other parts that can be salvaged. 
Now, it is not clear how many of these tanks are simply refurbished and how many are upgraded with new modules. It is possible that some old engines are simply refurbished and reused in one of these tanks. I would assume it has to do with the state the tank and its components are in. Now, in this other documentary that I mentioned, they are advertising these companies and saying they need more people, where they give contact information and stuff like that. This is probably because military factories and facilities have started working in three shifts, 24-7, and therefore need a lot more people to work for them. So they are trying to show themselves in the best light and show how regular people with no prior knowledge are working in order to attract new workers. Of course, they do talk about providing training and teaching for new people as well. So I would say it is quite possible they lack some manpower for those facilities, or maybe they want to expand them, who knows. Anyway, it has to be noted that all T-80 BVM and D-72B3 tanks that Russia is producing are all upgraded of old tanks in storage. That includes the tanks with the cheap modernizations, like the ones with cheap uncooled thermals. These are, by the way, made in these repair facilities. I've covered this topic a while ago when I talked about the modernization of T-62s. These repair facilities refurbish tanks taken from storage and are tasked with installing new components like new thermal site and ERA mounts on top of just refurbishing them. In T-62 footage we could also see them working on T-80 tanks. Regular factories like Omsk and Nizhny Tagil are still putting out tanks with standard components, like the Sosna U site, now dubbed PNMT, more modern communication systems, and so on. These others simply refurbish a tank, take out an old night vision site, and pop in this thermal in its place, and the tank is ready to go. Some days ago, the CEO of Rostec, the company that owns all these factories, said that they have increased the tank production by seven times in a year. I really find that hard to believe. First, only new tank currently being produced is T90M, and it's not just being produced from scratch, Older tanks like T90 Model 1992 and T90A are being used as bases for modernization up to T90M standard. The rest are, as I stated previously, upgrades of old tanks. Second, we have no evidence whatsoever that would actually prove this claim. The production has definitely increased, but by 7 times? I don't know. I find that hard to believe. And keep in mind, this is just tanks. He said that the production of lightly armored vehicles like BMPs and armored cars has increased by four and a half times. So a clear distinction between tanks and infantry fighting vehicles and APCs has been made. Maybe they delivered seven times more tanks, including the repaired ones, than the amount that was produced last year? I don't know. I'm trying to find the reasoning behind this claim, since that would be an insane amount. Now, on top of producing new T-90M tanks, they did state that they are on the way to restarting the production of T-80 tanks from scratch. That is because, well, they don't have an infinite amount of tanks in storage, and it is better to open a production of new tanks so it can ramp up before it's too late. Sadly, we don't know much about what new T-80 tanks will be, but they said that the goals of the new tank are increased protection and new 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine, compared to the 1250 horsepower currently used on latest T-80 tank models. But it isn't clear as to when the production of these new tanks should start. It should also be noted that we have no news on the production of the now infamous T-14 Armata. So to sum it up, damaged tanks are repaired either on the front line or behind the front line by repair battalions, or they are transported back to Russia to be repaired in repair facilities. It all, of course, depends on the level of damage done to the tank. New tanks are mostly refurbished tanks from storage, which are then either sent in their basic configuration or upgraded with new components to more modern standards. And we have tanks made completely from scratch, that being only T-90M for now, with the 80 tank production planned to be restarted in the near future. The biggest problem is that we sadly don't have actual numbers, other than ones that are obvious propaganda, so it is hard to say if Russians are actually capable of restoring their losses in the war or if they are lagging behind. That would be all for now. If you like my content, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.